Hi, I'm Ramajin. Today we're gonna do another discussion topic regarding gender issue in USA with this Pino Gris. Let's go! Ah, it hurts. Let's talk about gender issue in America. Go! It's kind of a clickbaity gender issue in America. Maybe I'll talk about that probably a little. The um, But isn't it interesting that in the introduction you called me Pinot Gris, even though you know very well it's a French-based name, pronounced Pinot Gris. It's not Greece. You can't spread it around as a slimy thing. So, you know, there's an ex- what does it mean then to express my name? Um, it requires more than one person to truly function. And we get something like this in music. When you listen to a song, you can have an idea of what the voice of the um, artist wants to express. Maybe there's some, it's happy, but there's some kind of longing underlying it, it's angry, whatever. And it very quickly turns phony. Imagine a modern art piece where somebody has just thrown a bunch of trash around, and you can find these, they're not hard. And then it doesn't, you stare at it and go, what is the meaning of this? This doesn't make any sense. It's not even pretty, or there's no craftsmanship to appreciate, though I understand the meaning. And then you go and read the card, and it's got some talk about, oh, it's my struggles doing this or that, coming out, la, 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 la. And it's totally one-way instructionary. The artist is telling you how to yell. It feels phony. So when we get to gender, it's really interesting because it's something that people do very naturally. And I think I can't really think think of another part of the human domain where we so strongly encounter negation. Here by negation, I don't just mean cutting things out. I mean a very specific type of negation, which is when something's negative quality is part of its positive identity. I'll borrow a bit of a joke, but I'll make it my own here. During Corona, I went to the store and I said, to the clerk, excuse me, do you have toilet paper yet? And he said, I'm sorry, you're in the wrong store. The store without toilet paper is across the street. We're the store without um, soap. You know, like, you, it's kind of stupid, but you can really get the idea a little bit. And gender works very strongly like this. A man isn't just strong, he's not just brave or whatever. He's also the things he's not. He's not a woman. He's not weak. He's not so on and so forth. And so when these things are expressed, like with the artist making music, an outside observer can kind of get an idea of what's going on when he watches it. So these are very normal and powerful parts of human experience. So then, commonly now, there's a lot of talk about however many genders. There's not just male and female. There's, I'm afraid I'm not really up to speed on them, so I'll just make some up. There's uh, gender fluid, there's gender lavender, there's gender reverse, there's gender non-binary, non-whatever. I don't know. I don't know all of the numbers uh, or the, the distinctions. But I'm afraid that I find myself really suspicious of them. And not necessarily because they're new or something, but because of the place that these things are taking in society. I think there's a societal movement which is not emancipatory. It's in fact very strongly conservative. And it sort of rides alongside other emancipatory projects. So I'll lay it out quite flatly. Like, if you take something like transgendered people, transgender people should be allowed to go on their project without being bothered. If they do a misdeed, it's a normal misdeed. It's not some sort of super evil. And I think the hope, the aim, that in a, a good society, if somebody does a misdeed to a transgendered person, it's a normal misdeed. 
it's just normal human behavior at that point. What I see then is, I, I, can, I think I can draw it out when we talk about something like preferred pronouns. Here, the instruction on how to perceive comes straight from the artist, that modern artist that I was talking about. It's not possible then to look at a person and be able to see what he's doing from the outside and thus detect the expression. The expression is only what they call self-identified. And to some degree, this is necessary, especially when some of the projects are really kind of, you know, um, not intuitive to most people. Like if you imagine a male to female transgender person who has a very, like, unfortunate appearance, being very definitely a man in form, but wearing a dress or whatever, you can see how there's going to be confusion. Um, but like this idea that a person ha should and has to select where they are on these coordinates, I think is very phony. Um, and this is where I get more into society because it appeals to power, sort of like a state regulatory power. Um, if you are in, it's quite common now in businesses in the United States to have to have preferred pronouns, as they would say, like maybe in your email or on your office door or something. So you have to introduce them just like giving over the name. And um, what becomes interesting then is if you would prefer not to do this, you encounter a violent reaction. I went to a gender conference here and I'm afraid it didn't talk a lot about psychological gender. It was mostly about transgenderism and sociology, which was sometimes interesting. But they um, sometimes they're always asked, oh, what, are, you know, what are your preferred pronouns? And I would give a cheeky response. I'd say, just use English. English is fine. And then they would say, well, no, what do you want? Do you want he, she? Do you want they, them? Something like this. And like, I, it's, that's for you. I mean, like, I wear, like, my gothic Lolita clothes. I'm all pretty much definitely a girl, so it shouldn't be hard to figure out. But I noticed this moment of confusion where they're like, okay, maybe you're just naive, right? Like, you're a foreigner. And then they, they so they'll try to instruct me, and then they'll encounter that, no, I, I'm just not interested. And then there's a moment of terror, like a very brief flash of terror in them and then the anger comes out and it's just my goofy half German half English head but anger also sounds like angriff which is attack in German so they go on the attack and um you see this again in business where if you kind of don't and I don't mean like you 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 like abuse another person by calling a man she or something like that. I just mean if you're not really interested, you'll probably before be before your company's HR talking to them about it, you'll discover that they have a file on you. They've been interviewing other people. It reminds me a lot of like the Stasi overhearing. Um, these are the secret police that existed in Eastern Germany, overhearing uh, that you made some sort of misdeed against the state, and now they're investigating you. And even if they don't really do anything of it, the effect of intimidation is quite there. Um, so I f I'm very suspicious of that use of power. I don't, I don't think it's going to free anyone of anything. So what is it controlling people into? It's making you are an object of that company. You are basically its slave in every meaningful sense of the word. And you are obligated to choose to tell the company what kind of slave you are, to pick your sexual coordinates, your whatever. But in doing so, you're told this will make you free. But in truth, this is your slavery expressing itself, you view as your own freedom. That's all I really want to say about it being part of society, being part of human experience. Gender is really fascinating because there's like our normal naive, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, or the people who have the kind of mixed feelings. 
you know, like, um, but you get to a point where you encounter some sort of impasse. Um, transgender people encounter this very naturally, I think. But we can see it in cisgendered people. Cis meaning on this side, not transferring over. We imagine a man who loses his job. He's no longer, he's keeping the house for his wife, no longer earning the money. Now she's doing his old position. So he has to change diapers and whatever. And he thinks, my God, am I really a man? He's encountered the same impassable dilemma. And when you get there, I think you can find that there's something more that comes out of your identity. You can enter a new stage where you have became a man, then you unbecame, a, or I'm sorry, you had the being of a man, then you were unbeing a man, and then you became something new. What do we call that? A man. I think you also can see it in sort of something called um, androgen insensitivity syndrome. Androgen here means the chemicals of the body that make men. And so these are XY chromosome people. They're basically genetically male, but their body is resistant. It doesn't get affected by androgens. So when they're a baby, they default to sort of a female body, but they have male gonads. So they still have testicles in their stomach and they have female physiology. So they have a vagina, but no womb. And normally these people, I mean, they grow as women, they have breasts, they look like women, they sound like women. And then some, usually there's some, they get found out when, when they're older, like in their 20s or 30s, they have uh, one of their gonads moves and it causes them a lot of pain. And then somebody goes and looks, or maybe during an examination, a doctor says, tell me more about how you've never had your period. How long is is that never, never, or just in a long time? And then more investigation is done. So then this person finds out that they're not able to have children, that they don't even have ovaries. And then you enter this question, my God, what am I? Well, the answer is it's a woman. <laughs> so it's no big deal. But it's not a woman like it used to be. I think that transformation is really important for people to face. Thank you, Pino, for your input. Today, Rajin has learned something very important. How genders a very complicated matter. Not just in the US, but all around the world. But it can be differentiated, I think she crushed. In many other... Yeah, it can be different types of genderism issues and uh no she didn't crush and so yeah that's all folks see you in the next episode put your hands up put your hands up put your hands up put your hands up thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you like it please give us a comment and subscribe our channel see you in next video